Mina, Konbanwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. Back with more Job today. The 30 minute message will not be today. Um, possibly tomorrow or Wednesday is when that should come out. God's omnipresence is coming. Well, it's technically already here. But my message on God's omnipresence is coming. It is in the works. Do not give up or despair. I do have plans to make that happen. So just want to let you guys know that it is coming, and it is coming definitely. As long as I have the ability to put out a webcam, put out a webcam, put out a video via my webcam and my microphone, it'll happen. So as of today, we're going to do Job 33. And this is a message, it kind of, it hits me a, a bit between the eyes. It's not like a, a hard rap, but it's a pretty solid tab. It's like kind of like one of those... Uh, one of those, um, I, bleh, and my brain just, there we go, Itachi to Sasuke, one of those doots right on the head, and like, it hurts, but, and it's right between the eyes, not knocking on your butt, but it hurts. <laughs> I am such a weeb, and it's great. So we're going to start with Job chapter 33, and it's going to be verse, hmm, let's start with verse 6. Um, again, if you want to read anything around what I'm saying, please do. I highly encourage you to check behind me, make sure what I'm saying is correct. Um, if you want to learn the context of the words, please feel free to do so and study it and read it for yourself. So verse 6, this is Elihu speaking to Job. Truly I am as your spokesman before God. I also have been formed out of clay. Surely no fear of me will terrify you, nor will my hand be heavy on you. And then go over to verse 31. I know it's a big jump, but it's, it's key to the heart of this message. Job chapter 33, verse 31. Give ear, Job, listen to me. Hold your peace, and I will speak. If you have anything to say, answer me. Speak, for I desire to justify you. If not, listen to me. Hold your peace, and I will teach you wisdom. Now, the last little bit there is... A bit audacious, especially if this is a younger man coming to a much older man. However, he feels like he has something to say, and I would definitely reference yesterday's message. If you're young and you have something to say, do not be silent. Say it. Uh, again, how you say it, uh, depending on how they said it back then and how you say it nowadays, if you tell someone, whether they're old or younger than you, hold your peace and I will teach you wisdom. I'm so sure that would be so greatly or graciously received nowadays. The way you say it is very important, and that's pretty much the heart of what I had to say here. The first part where he's like, no fear of me will terrify you. My hand will be heavy on you. And he said, if you have anything to say, answer me. Speak, for I desire to justify you. His heart was so radically different from Job's comforters, uh, Job's other friends. Uh, such poor friends and poor comforters indeed. The worst. Condemning him in his hour of misery, not being of any help or relief whatsoever. Now, I've covered that in previous messages from Job as well. Elihu's heart was to help Job, to answer Job, to try to help him find the answers that he was missing, maybe fill in some of the blind spots that he wasn't seeing. He wasn't trying to condemn him. He was trying to help him. He wasn't trying to find some sin that he did, but he was, he was trying to basically correct something he saw was wrong. His hard motive was so radically different from Job's other friends. And that that is so important when you're speaking to someone to not just have your opinion or even the absolute truth but to have a heart that's for that person, a heart of love for that person, even if they're your enemy, to love them. New Testament speaks amply on loving your enemy. And that hits me square between the eyes, because sometimes I'd really rather just kind of say, okay, guys, here's the truth, here's how it goes, deal with it. And every now and then, I have done that, and every now and then, I will continue to do that. And certainly there's a time and a place for that. For me, that time and place would be about 90 to 95% of the time. But life has shown me, and I feel like this scripture also shows me, I've got to cut that percentage way back. The truth is of the utmost importance. People created in the image of God that he died and shed his blood for are also of the utmost importance. He loves us and he is truth. Both are incredibly important important, the truth that we speak in the heart in which we speak it. 
Sometimes I just want to blare out the truth, and sometimes I need to take a step back and say, hold on, am I helping or am I hurting? Truth is important. Truth is good. Truth is great. But the hard motivation behind what you say, not so much how you say it, but once you have a heart for the person, that in and of itself is going to affect how you say what you have to say. And guys, you know I'm telling the truth. You know I'm not, you know I'm not telling you or feeding you some bull crap right now. You know what I'm saying is right. You know it's true. How you feel about the person you're talking to has a drastic impact on how you say it. You can have one message, one truth, one point you want to get across, but if your heart is for that person or your heart is against that person, that one thing is going to come out in two completely separate ways. Once again, you know I'm right on that, guys. Just look at yourself, look at your heart, look in your mind. You know I'm telling you the truth there, and you know that's actually how it is. Whether you want to admit it or not, that is how it is. So guys, love your enemy. Love your fellow man. Love people. And that's going to drastically impact how you speak the truth. One final note, there are so many times on YouTube I have just wanted to shout out and scream certain things I have felt. Um, just to be specific, the way I feel on abortion, I'm against it. The way I feel on homosexuality, I'm against it. The way I feel on other religions, be it Islam or Hinduism or Buddhism or Shintoism or Baha'i or basically any religion that is not Christianity. Um, because I feel all those things are wrong, I kind of want to do some Bible thumping and Bible bashing and say, Hey, this stuff's wrong! But I have held back greatly. Because I want to deliver this in a way that you guys understand. And I want to make sure you guys know I love you. Even if I disagree with you. Even if I think you're going to hell. I love you. And I want to, I want to be on this channel to help. So I have watched my words greatly. And I've tried to present myself and the Bible in such a way as to where it's still radically different from the way most Christians would do it and most churches would do it. And Just look at my video game content. Um, I am not an ordinary guy or an ordinary Christian. I'm a little bit of a strange guy. I'm a bit of a weirdo. And so I feel like it puts me on, in a perfect spot on YouTube. I feel like it's, YouTube is a good home for uh, my fellow strange human beings. But I want to be careful with the way I say things because as important as the truth is, I want you guys to know that I love you. I love you. God loves you so much he died for you. And conveying that really is just as important as conveying the truth that I have to say. So if my heart's in the right place, if my heart's in God's love, then even if the truth is harsh, even if you don't receive it, I will at least have said it in a way where I actually do care about you. So thank you guys very much for watching this video. And that's why I always end these videos with I love you. And God bless.